everyone. Um, looking back on Saturday, uh, obviously a strange uh, first half, uh, how everything went down. Uh, both teams scored on, uh, on defense. Uh, there were some explosive plays. Um, we were able to get uh, the extra turnover on the uh, fourth and one stop, which I thought was big uh, to take that one in and score. You know, it's 14 nothing, 14 13, and then 28 uh, 13, and kind of went back and forth uh, a little bit. A couple things that uh, really stuck out to us is um, getting two field goals and two two minute drives, in essence. Had the first field goal uh, with around two minutes left. Um, they elected to use some timeouts to try to save time, which I thought was smart because they were going to get the ball at the second half. And then uh, we got a, a sack, and so we started using our timeouts. And then we were able to get another field goal uh, to score twice before half, even though there were field goals I thought was really uh, important there. And then uh, uh, the missed PATs I thought were really important because then uh, West Virginia was kind of chasing a lot of points uh, the rest of the day and had to go for two and weren't successful there. And then, in essence, you're, you're losing almost a touchdown with two-point conversions miss, missed in PATs, then the missed field goal. So special teams I thought was really good. I thought Malik Knowles was dynamite on special teams as well as a receiver. And um, our offense was very aggressive and did some really good things in the, in the first half. Um, a little bit tougher probably to do things in the second half because they took about nine minutes off the clock in the first drive and don't get points, which uh, uh, was, I'm sure, uh, demoralizing to the fact of uh, they needed some quick scores and we were able to get a stop there. So um, please, anytime you can go on the road and get a win, especially in Morgantown, it's a really tough place to play. It's a tough environment and, and our guys were able to handle business. And uh, now we're back this week, got a really good uh, KU team coming in here. I've got a lot of respect for Coach Leipold, uh, does a great job, and, and uh, um, they're, they're playing really well. Uh, I know they've been beaten the last couple weeks, but uh, they're a good football team and, and uh, uh, should be a heck of a battle here on Saturday. What is this edition of Kansas football doing that's differently and being more successful than the previous one? I think the biggest thing is believing. You know, I, I don't know their – uh, their roster, um, but they're playing hard and they're believing, and uh, they do have talented players w without question. Uh, but they're playing inspired. Um, them getting to a bowl game, I I know, was huge uh, for for the program, and uh, I know that this is kind of the uh, potential cherry on top for them uh, with this game uh, because they're already bowl eligible. So they really don't have anything to lose. And uh, I know this, that they're playing hard for each other and they're playing hard for, for their coaching staff. And uh, um, it's going to be a big challenge. Jalen Daniels struggled on Saturday against Texas, but we saw earlier in the year how dynamic he can be and how he seems to improve the entire team. What kind of problems does he present? Well, he causes a lot of problems because he can throw it exceptionally well. He, uh, he can run it. He extends plays, does... Um, a little bit of everything, and uh, you're right, he makes everybody around him better. I I'd say the same thing about Bean. I, I really would. I think he extends plays, and he runs around, and um, both quarterbacks have had really good success throughout this season, and um, uh, assume we're going to see both, or both will be available, and, and I don't know how much the offense changes, but uh, something we're diving into right now to see if it does, but uh, they're both really dynamic players. Uh, that throw it well, run it well, and uh, they're an explosive offense, and, and you can see that. And uh, um, we have to have our eyes right because of a lot of misdirection and a lot of motions and, and uh, um, kind of eye candy that they try to pull your eyes away. Finally, Sincere Mason seemed to provide a bad update yesterday on social media. What's his status and what's his, how, what's his due to the safety position? Do you well, do you want to play Fitz? Okay, well, no, we don't want that. Uh, <laughs> So, um, Sincere's out for the year as well. Um, tough, tough blow, and uh, feel awful for him. And so, uh, it uh, makes it pretty thin back there for sure. And you lose uh, Kobe, and then you lose Sincere. Um, but it's late, uh, late November football, and that happens. And we've got to get the next guy ready to go. Uh, there's a lot of guys that uh, are going to work in that position, uh, and uh, we'll kind of work through that this week and see what the best option is for us. Is there anyone that maybe hasn't seen the field very much that might get an opportunity? Um, Kendra would be the one, uh, Steiger, that played a little bit last week that could see the field. Um, we're, we're still working through all that. Um, 
Max Marsh, Mashmeyer, uh, TJ, VJ. Um, you know, there's a lot of guys back there that uh, we're, we're throwing around. Um, and uh, based on what our package and what our plan will be, um, we'll probably play a few guys back there. You've been a part of uh, some pretty heated rivalries in the past. Now that uh, Kansas actually has a winning record, mm -hmm. does that make, uh, I don't know, does it make it any, does it make you guys view it any differently? Um, I think the big thing for me since I've been here that makes us view this a little differently is it's the last game of the season. And I think that's probably a good thing. I don't know where that's going or how that's determined. But uh, the fact that uh, I think rivalry games should be played later in a season, whether it's week 11, week 12, uh, I think is great for, for both teams. Uh, no matter what the record is, I think there's a, there's a, lot, of, there's a lot at stake um, when you have your, your rivalry game at the end. Uh, so that's what makes this one really unique. Um, and, and without question, when you watch them on film, you see a team that plays faster, plays more confident, um, uh, is making plays on both sides of the ball, and is a good team. Is there anything Will Howard's doing right now that surprises you? No. About, uh, how about Malik Knowles? What's he done the last few to um, take off? You know, I, the, the rise of Ben Sennett has helped everybody. And I think you guys all see how dynamic Ben can be. And he's as fast as a lot of wide receivers. I mean, he really runs down the field, and he has a big body that can wall people out and catch the ball. And he does things after a catch. Um, the, you know, the forgotten guy, Deuce Vaughn, still back there, so he draws a ton of attention. And now you have a tight end that can stretch the field, a running back that's uh, one of the best in college football, and it's opened things up for Phil, Malik, and, and Cade. And last week, Phil or uh, Malik was a huge factor because there was a lot of single coverage on him because of the other guys. And the thing that I was so happy with Malik is the amount of yards after catch uh, he had and after contact, whether that was catching a slant route and splitting them and almost getting in the end zone or catching a ball on third and 14 or third and 12 for 10 yards, breaking a tackle and scoring, or getting contacted at the 20-22 on a kickoff return and getting to the 33 or 35. I mean, those little things um, are, are big chunks of yards that uh, he's playing really well. I wanted to ask, um, on the tackle Daniel Green made when they tried to go for the quarterback sneak against West Virginia, he timed that perfectly. He just like crashed down on the guy before he could even move yeah. forward. He said that's something you guys practice. H how difficult is that to uh, yeah, do? It's more than anything, it's practicing the timing. He hasn't probably jumped over to, t to tackle some of our scout team quarterbacks, but it's the timing that you practice. Um, and you know, give credit to the defensive line to get under the offensive line. And that's the whole key is to try to get those guys to be able to cut legs out so that there's um, uh, not a lot of penetration uh, from the offensive line. And uh, that was a huge play you know, for us to get the ball. Uh, it was the right move to go for it at, at that time, I thought, and for us to get the ball and get another short field when we were playing really well on offense. Coach, I want to ask you about Brendan Mott. Um, he obviously... <laughs> Big 12 Defensive Player of the Week. Just talk about his progression this year. Um, he went on scholarship this year uh, because he earned it. And uh, just seeing how much he has, has worked and, and grown within our system, gotten stronger, gotten quicker, um, understands the game really well, learned from a lot of guys before him that uh, uh, taught him how to do things. And you know, he went against really good offensive linemen for the last couple of years on scout team. and. Uh, just a guy that really has earned it, worked his tail off to be in this position. And um, he doesn't stay blocked. Um, he does a great job keeping himself alive and plays within the structure of the system and, and has been a you know, uh, beneficiary of some really big plays and made some big plays again Saturday. And can he and Austin Moore be two guys you guys, when you are out on the recruiting trail, point to as guys who have had successful careers as PWOs? Yeah, I think there's a bunch of those guys. Ben Sennett's another one, you know, um, and a couple of those guys are out of state. One's one's in state, but Nick Allen's another one. And, and there's so many of those guys. I mean, Gilly, and, and there's just tons of them that uh, there's so many success stories of if you come here and get a chance um, and you make the most of your opportunities and develop and, and realize that you're not there and it takes some time that uh, if you want to invest that time, you can do it. Just curious if you had uh, an update on Adrian's status this week. 
yeah, he won't play this week, but I know he's improving um, quite a bit, and he's got good spirits right now. Uh, I know he would like to play, um, but um, we, we don't see him uh, available this week. Something would happen to happen really well in the next three days, and I doubt that will happen. It's another senior class playing in their last home game under your watch, uh, probably one you've been with longer. Just what does this group mean to you? Yeah, it's hard to keep track of senior classes, as everybody knows, because is it a fourth-year senior, a fifth-year senior, a sixth-year senior? Are they coming back? Are they not coming back? Um, you know, there's going to be some guys that I'm going to hug for the second year in a row, uh, and there's going to be a couple guys that I'm going to hug, and I'm going to say, I'll see you next year, and they'll give me a quick wink. So uh, it, it, uh, it, it, it it's hard. I, I mean, it uh, it's, it's kind of a weird dynamic of where college football is at right now. Um, but um, we, we – we have really good seniors, and they've been really good this year uh, and over the last couple of years as far as um, making sure that that locker room uh, is is really good. And that's the thing that I'm most proud of with this older group, this you know fourth, fifth, sixth year guys is um, we came back from the pandemic in January of 2021, and they made they, they made a point that they were going to make that locker room um, something that uh, was really special. And it's been it's been fun, and you see that over the last two weeks when you go on two long road trips, one a night game and then one all the way out to, to Morgantown and see how much fun our guys have and how committed they are to each other. Um, it, it's a special group. One of those guys that came back was Ty Zentner. He's a semifinalist for the Ray Guy yeah. Award. What would be your case for him to win it? Because he does all three, for starters, and I know it's you know it's the Ray Guy Award, but he does all three and uh, doing them all really well. Um, and it was it, that's hard to do. Uh, I've got a guy that uh, played for me uh, that did all three, and he knows how hard it is, and, and he works up here now in Ben LeComp, and um, yeah, I, I marvel at what Ty's doing. To be doing all three of them at the level he's doing them, man, that, that's hard to do. And, and to make a 46-yarder, make two 53-yarders, which, you know, it's a little thing, but that's, that's – Rand and Jack and Ty have been through a ton together, and they know each other so well, and – it was neat. I mean, those guys understand it. The ball, they call timeout, the ball snapped, we get a kickoff, and he feels good. It's like, you know, you get two drives on the opening tee. It's a breakfast ball for him. And uh, I thought he banged it and then came back and hit it again. And um, he's playing really well right now, and he's playing with a lot of confidence. Yeah, you mentioned it last Saturday, but I think you've done it for the last two weeks. The jumbo package with Andrew Lyon getting yeah. kind of like a six guy on the line of scrimmage. What was the inspiration for that? Uh, Coach Riley, um, and uh, we got into uh, – we did some – ran some plays. We haven't ran here in a few years. Uh, we want to see where Liney's at because KT and Duff are doing a really good job, and we've got good cohesiveness in our O-line and good communication, and we've got to get Andrew some more snaps. And so that uh, – the last few weeks has allowed us to get him in the game, and that's given Liney a bunch of confidence. He's going to be a, a long-time starter here, and so um, I'm glad we got that package in. In what ways is Scott Nicky with the KU offense scheme guys open so frequently? I think he's got a great mind um, and uh, very creative and sees pictures that he's done that has had success, shows the same picture, does something different, or masks the picture, uh, and then with shift trade in motion gets back into something uh, and runs a lot of the same uh, neat stuff, in my mind, really, really creative things offensively uh, that um, it, it still goes down to the same thing. You you have to have your eyes right on defense. I don't care if it's pressure, if it's a base zone, you have to have your eyes right because if you don't, um, they've got so much speed at the wide receiver position and been really impressed with the tight ends and fullbacks because they catch the ball well, they block well, they, they run good routes. It's just a, it's a really difficult offense to defend. Defensive backfield, who has the baton been passed to as far as that communication aspect? It's got to be Drake and, and Josh. You know, uh, those are the two older guys that uh, kind of leaned on Kobe. Uh, then Kobe got hurt, and then they leaned on Sincere. And, and now I've talked to both those guys. We've got to lean on those two guys. Uh, those two guys have played a lot of football, been around each other, um, and, and know what we're supposed to do out there and may have to help a younger player. So it's got to be those two. Has Malik Knowles started to see the bigger picture of what a wide receiver does to get open on rub routes and just et cetera? Yeah, I think Coach Ward's done a great job, and Malik's been uh, really dialed in um, and uh, been a big focal point of our offense, which is important for us to get him the football. 
uh, however we get him the ball because he's, he's that dynamic. I think all of us have seen that uh, over his four years, but he's just so dialed into the game plan. Uh, he's got a great rapport with Adrian, has a great rapport with Will, uh, and uh, I'm excited for the senior year he's having. How would you describe the emotions of this team this week? Um, you know, it, it's – it's interesting because we talked about it at length on Monday. It's not a normal week for a variety of reasons. The first thing is there's no school. And so we're having a normal Monday and a normal Tuesday. We're going to adjust a little bit on Wednesday and Thursday for the Thanksgiving uh, time with potential families because we have so many guys that can get home from a short distance. That's the great thing about so many local guys. Um, the fact that uh, uh, it's KU week is another big piece uh, to that, and, and uh, it's the it's senior day. There's so many distractions uh, that could come up if you're not um, focused on on the task at hand, which is your preparation each day. Each day, and if you attack that preparation each day, uh, and make sure to not skip any steps and have no shortcuts. If you do all those things right, you're going to get to Saturday in a good place. You've mentioned time and time again, this is a seasoned group, and they're really process driven. Uh, do they have to ratchet that up even more this week? You know, I, I'm always careful about that. You know, that this one's more important than last week or the next week or the previous two weeks. I've never been a big believer in put all your eggs in this basket because if you don't have success, what happens? Uh, I, I think that's undue pressure on kids. You know, we talk a lot about pressure versus stress. Pressure is something you prepare for and you're ready for and you practice for. Stress is throwing things on kids that don't need to be thrown on. Um, whatever that may be, some of it's outside noise uh, that uh, th they need to be able to block out. Um, and I'm confident we have a, a really good group of leaders in here, great locker room in there that uh, they'll block out some of the outside noise and, and realize that the, the focus is um, us. It's not even KU or whatever's coming after. It's us and what we have to do on a daily basis to prepare. D. Scott kind of stole my question, but uh, <laughs> as he's wont to do. But uh, with a rivalry game, senior night, and everything, you talked about liking having the rivalry game at the end of the season. But mm -hmm. is that a positive where they can, where maybe they're more fired up, or are you concerned that there may be some distractions there? I think they're going to be fired up. I think they're going to be fired up. Now, whether or not we're good enough to win, we'll find out on Saturday. But whether or not we're good enough to win is dictated by how we handle today, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. For someone who hasn't been around the rivalry a ton, what makes this rivalry between K-State and KU something that's unique and special? Um, you know, when we bring back former players, I think it's cool. Um, to ask those guys about games. You know, one of my favorite guys is Brooks Barta. You know, Brooks Barta loves this game, and he's going to be busy this weekend. But uh, Brooks Barta uh, is a guy that's talked to our team a few times. Uh, that um, I, I think of people like that and the former guys, the people that have, that have put on the helmet way before, put on the power cap way before any of our guys have or been in the positions that I'm in or any of our coaches have. That's why we play this game. That's why we're. That's what we're trying to honor, and that's who we're trying to honor is the alumni that uh, laid the foundation for us that, that started this rivalry. And um, that's what you've got to kind of keep in, in the back of your mind too and not, not try to get ahead of yourself because it's those people that uh, um, you're playing for. I know you care a ton about the alumni and everything that Coach Snyder mm -hmm. did to establish this program and help it grow into what it is today. But like, what was your learning process of this rivalry, and like, how did you learn about the history of it and everything like that? Um, just from former players, more than anything. Uh, the guys, like I mentioned, like with Brooks and Stan Weber and, and different people. I just you, you ask guys about it. You ask the, you know, the 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 local Kansas kids, the Brock Monies, you know the. The guys that were here when I first got here, Wyatt Hubert, all those guys that uh, tell me about this. And you just try to um, – you don't want to have anything preconceived of this is what it's about. You just want to ask the guys that have been on the front lines for it. Quick one. A lot of people talk about, you know, like one game at a time. No one game means more than anything. But, you know, you ask an Ohio State or Michigan fan, it's like that one game means more. Like, is that how this rivalry is um, this week? Or yeah, anything like I, that I don't know how other people perceive it. I've been in a lot of rivalry games. Um, 
and uh, been as a player, as assistant coach, as a head coach. I just I, I caution people about putting too much pressure and too much stress on kids. It just doesn't do any good, you know. Um, it, these guys know what's at stake. Our guys are smart enough to realize what's at stake. So rather than putting all that stress on them, let's just handle the day as it goes and make sure that we're prepared for today and prepare uh, for Wednesday and Thursday and Friday, and then uh, we'll see if we're good enough. How have you, excuse me, how have you seen Devin Neal grow from, from last year into this? I think it's just reps and experience. I mean, he's – He's the guy. We saw him so early last year that I didn't get to follow how they did uh, after we played him because I know it was in October, and I don't know. I don't know what if that was game two, three, or four in our conference, but I know it was. It was fairly early, um, but now you get a chance to watch a, a body of work uh, of a whole season, and, and he's gotten stronger as the season's gone on. I've always thought he's a really good running back that. Uh, uh, had speed, had power. Now he's showing vision. He's showing patience. All those things, and so um, he's having a really good year. And then, can you lost some of the more dynamic wide receivers that they had in the past, but they have a, a group this year that's that's been really solid. What, what's impressed you most about guys like Grimm and and, and other guys like they make plays. They can really run. They understand the offense. You got to realize now they're year two in the offense. Um, which goes to show you the coaching staff is really good. Um, you know, Scott Fuchs is a good friend of mine, the offensive line coach. I've coached with him before. Uh, these the, the coaches know what they're doing there. They're really good coaches uh, across the board. I know a couple on defense, know uh, Lance really well, know a couple on offense. These guys are being coached really well. And you when when you see that and you see it on the film, um, I mean, these you guys guys improve when people believe in them. It's 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 amazing how um, when guys develop and, and buy in and, and believe that how much better they can be. Oh, uh, Chris Will said something interesting the other day. He said right now it feels like he knows the offense like the back of his hand. Just wondering when you watched him in practice or whenever. When, when did you first realize, hey, this guy's got this thing down? Oh, just taking it from spring, we, like we talked about, when he had all the reps with the ones in the spring uh, of 2022, and then watching him continue to grow through fall camp. Uh, and just I sit in the quarterback meetings a decent amount with CK, and he's got the answers to a lot of the questions, and he's very calm. He's very confident. Uh, if, if, if Colin makes a mistake in calling something, Will can correct it. Doesn't happen very often, but Will can correct it. Or Will say, "You sure you want that?" And Colin, oh no, wait, yeah, let's do it this way. I mean, the kid just been around him for three years, and that goes back to the question of the wide receivers at KU and and our quarterback here. When people believe in you and you and you buy in and you work hard and uh, um, you understand there's a process, you improve, and he has improved uh, really well this year. It's been it's been remarkable. Okay, have a good week, everyone. Have a good Thanksgiving.